What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So, I was watching boxing tonight. Shout out to True TV, top rank. And I was watching their card as I gear up for Canelo Kirkland. Glenn Tapia fought Michael Soro. Link in the description if you want to see how it played out. Congratulations to Michael Soro. Pulled the upset and stopped Glenn Tapia in four rounds. It was scheduled for 10, and he got the stoppage in four. Another Freddie Roach fighter down. You see... When I make videos, I really speak from the heart. And I'm a real boxing head. I don't care what style you are. If you bring excitement, great. Canelo Kirkland seems like an all-action, explosive type of fight. I'm all for it. But I could watch a chess match like Marquez and Bradley just the same. So when I'm making videos and I'm talking about like Jim Lampley really fueling this anti-Gotti list and shitting on fighters who are happen to be skilled, you got to analyze some things. Listen to what I'm telling you. Have a brain. There's fighters like on the anti Gotti list, right? All skilled. Miguel Vasquez, Floyd Mayweather, Vladimir Klitschko, Edislandi Laura, Guillermo Rigonda, right? All skilled. How many of those guys are, are champions on a slanderous list? You know what I mean? Meanwhile, people that make the Gotti list, the regular Gotti list, the, the list that's supposed to be good, are people like Glenn Tapia, who just got knocked out. In the past, on the Gotti list, he ranked uh, Victor Ortiz on it, Leo Santa Cruz. So to me, I just like I said before, I think it's it's kind of a spit in the face to the high high caliber skilled fighters, and also to Arturo Gotti because Arturo Gotti had a massive heart. What has Victor Ortiz or Leo Santa Cruz done that you would ever compare the two in in that category in terms of giving fans all they wanted? You know what I mean? Did he do that in the Maidana fight? Yeah, for some rounds until he quit. Did he do that in the Mayweather fight, the Josito Lopez fight for a period of time? You know what I mean? So to make that comparison, that, that's what I said. I think he's he's using it for brownie points for casual fans. Now, Freddie Roach is in a very difficult spot. As you guys know, Zhao Ximing, Chinese former Olympic gold medalist, took his first pro loss. Manny Pacquiao last week fought Mayweather after a five-year buildup took a loss. Ruslan Provotnikov, another Freddie Roach fighter. Now, for that fight with Lucas Matisse, I'm not sure if uh, Roach was training him the whole time. I've seen them training through portions of it, but on fight night, his assistant, Marvin, was taking care of it. Angle was preparing Pacquiao. Now, Glenn Tapia takes a L. The only person on the Freddie Roach roster to keep the ship afloat in terms of a win in the win column is possibly Cotto, and he's fighting a fight that most don't consider too, too dangerous in Daniel Gill. Nonetheless, it's not going to be a fight that's going to give him a lot of praise and credit because of the opponent. People want to see him fight Canelo. They want to see him fight Triple G. They want to see him fight even a guy like Quillen or or David Lemieux or something or Demetrius Andre, Charlo brother, somebody who could challenge him. Now, the good thing, the benefit is despite Gill not being a blockbuster type of fight, Cotto was skilled before he came to Freddie Roach. He's always a good boxer. So that's what I'm trying to tell people. People want to talk about this like bang, bang, shoot him up. And it's fun. I, don't get me wrong. I get lured into it too. Like if it's an all action brawl, Ruslan versus Matisse and Rios Alvarado. But the thing that makes me mad about like the, the anti Gotti list is we're actually condemning. If if people were giving credit to the skilled fighters and the champions just the same as they were to like to the brawlers, then I would be like, okay, that's cool. Because they're being real boxing fans and embracing all the styles. But it's not. I think lists like that create segregation and separation. So if you don't fight like the Ruslan Provotnikovs and all the fighters that make the regular Gotti list, then you get slandered. And I'm sick of it. I just don't want to see that in boxing because the cold part about boxing is this. The fighters that you would typically see on a list like the Gotti list, fans turn on them. As soon as they start losing, go to their Twitter, go to their Instagram, see what people say. You're a bum. You're overrated. You suck. You're weak. I was at the Alvarado Rios 3. They give us two great fights. The third fight, they're spitting on, on Mike Alvarado. They're throwing cans and beer because he quit, right? And he, he's given us his all in, in terms of the sport. And it was just a bad showing that night. But they forget that. They throw all that out the window. So I'm on my channel. I'm not going to perpetuate all these less skilled fighters and stuff. And then the fans turn their back as soon as they take an L. Like Glenn Tapia, he's in a difficult position. He already got stopped by James Kirkland. Now he got stopped by 
a real nobody. I don't really know him. Maybe you guys do. I'm not really familiar with Michael Soro, but congratulations again to him. And he just got stopped by him. That's hard to bounce back. Some guys, yeah, they can do it. Like Pacquiao got stopped early in his career, came back to do historic things in the sport of boxing. Not everyone can do that. So to me, Freddie Roach is in a very, very difficult and sensitive position. And I've said this for a while. He needs to teach his fighters defense. It can't be offense, 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 because you're going to get to somebody who's bigger, badder, and stronger than you. And you don't have anything to fall back on. Like I said, for, for Cotto, good thing is he is a good boxer and he was always a talented boxer. But when you rely only on offense and you're not really doing a defense, it's it's not a good look. Look at when Amir Khan was with Freddie Roach. He was doing pretty good, had a good run. Zab Judah performance, I think Roach was in his corner. Then he got to Danny Garcia, a fight he was winning and ended up getting knocked out in the third or fourth round. Now with Virgil Hunter, not that he's been in with the puncher as big as Garcia, but he looks like he's being more responsible. He's being more educated and making better sound decisions. And you listen to interviews, that's what he's saying he's learning with Virgil Hunter. You got to learn the defense. And again, I know some of you guys hate it or it's boring to you to see a skilled fighter or someone use their brain. But I mean, you condemn guys like Klitschko, Mayweather, and Andre Ward for clinching. But guess what? They all bounced back. Klitschko got knocked out by Lehman Brewster, right? Now he's on a 18 consecutive title defense heavyweight streak, which is almost about to, to tie for number one if he keeps fighting, if he continues fighting. So Klitschko realized that, okay, maybe I have a delicate chin. These guys hit hard. How can I use my strengths and mask my weaknesses, protect my fortress? So he uses that piston long ass jab to keep people at range. Same thing with Mayweather. He's been hurt. Demarcus Corley, Zab Judah, Shane Mosley, right? Even the Pacquiao fight, he got buzzed in the fourth round. He did what a champion is supposed to do, what a skilled fighter does. Pacquiao caught him off guard with a straight left. Keep in mind, Pacquiao's best punch. He walked himself back to the ropes. Pacquiao went to go in for the kill, covered up, right? You got guys like Glenn Tapia. He might have been able to, to make it out of that round. He didn't take a knee. He, he was crouched down. Watch the clip. It's in the description. He was crouched down. You were getting hit with like thunderous blows. Take a knee. It's okay. It's okay. That's what I'm saying. These people want to appeal and appease and, and get the crowd. They don't want to get booed and all kinds of shit like that. So they're not going to take a knee. There's no shame in taking a knee. I would rather get popped by a good straight left, walk myself into the ropes, compose myself, and then go on to win the rest of the rounds pretty much for the most part or get rocked by Shane Mosley and then never get hit by that same punch again or get knocked out earlier in my career like Klitschko and then perfect my style, use my strengths as strengths and mask my weaknesses. A lot of you guys, again, you guys can keep celebrating these fighters who are only limited and they don't have a defense and, and trying to clown the people with defense. But I'm telling you, this is how it ends up when you end up fighting somebody. So it's just looking bad for Freddie Roach, man. And I'm not trying, I'm not slandering him or anything. I'm just being honest. You got to teach defense. It comes with the territory. I mean, name someone who's winning and is stable. Cotto, who else? Name what other star he has that's winning. Glenn Tapia just knocked out. Mayweather, after five years, beat his uh, prize pupil in Manny Pacquiao. You can come up with excuses and this and that, shoulder injury and all that. But I mean, a loss is still a loss. That doesn't change anything by declaring something after the fact. Then you look at Zhao Shiming, Ruslan Provotnikov. I mean, Ruslan was getting hit with thunder. No head movement, just getting blasted. It's fun to watch, but again, if you guys want, keep putting your eggs in the basket and, and shitting on the fighters with actual skill and making fun of them for making educated, sound decisions. But I tell you this, just like you've seen Glenn Tapia just get knocked out by not making a sound decision, people clown Rigandau for getting knocked down. He got knocked down in the Roberto Marroquin fight. He got knocked down versus Donaire. He got knocked down in his last fight with Amagasa. But guess what? He makes the right decisions and comes back stronger. Amagasa, he beat the brakes. He beat the holy shit out of a bigger fighter. After the knockdowns, he got knocked down twice. One was kind of a slip, whatever. They counted as two. And then it looked like there was a golf ball in his cheek. Donaire knocked him down in one of the mid rounds. And he had Donaire backing up in the 12th round, right? Mayweather got hurt in the Mosley fight. 
went on to dominate Shane and win every single other round. So, again, for the eyes, it's fun. It's fun to watch all these fights and see knockouts and stuff. But you guys got to stop clowning the fighters who make educated decisions because you're not there to support the, the brawlers and the guys that show heart after the fact. Who's talking about Mike Alvarado? Name one person since his loss to Rios in the third fight. Who's talking about, yeah, I can't wait to see Mike Alvarado back in action. He's a, he's an action fighter. Why is no one talking about him? You know what I mean? Same thing with Glenn Tapia. He's in a position very difficult to bounce back from. Young, two knockouts, and you haven't even fought what's considered to be the, the cream of the crop, top three guys in your division. It's just a very difficult. So, I mean, the guys like Triple G, the Mayweathers, Rigondals, Edis Lonnie Lord, the guys who are skilled, who use their skill and amateur experience and different things like that, I tip my hat off to him. Freddie Roach, he has his work cut out to get back into prime form with his stable. His next shot is at is Cotto. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of Freddie Roach and his stable. What can they do to get back on the, the win streak or whatnot? Uh, what fights do you want to see next? And what do you think of the Glenn Tapia stoppage? Drop me a comment. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. Mm -hmm.